There can be no doubt artificial intelligence helps defend government and business systems from cyber attacks. But conversely, AI systems can be used to augment attacks against government and uh, corporate, even SMB systems. For Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson. It's a pleasure today to speak with Mark Gazet, the CEO of Theta Ray. Mark, thanks a lot for your time today. Uh, one of the biggest targets for cyber criminals and cyber criminals deploying AI solutions is the financial service industry. So I wonder if you could help us understand how how financial crime is being transformed by technology and artificial intelligence. Sure, Sudan, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. And uh, I have to say it's an exciting topic, but uh, also a bit uh, dangerous for us as human beings. And you're absolutely right. The world of financial crime has changed. And let's start with the fact that people today will not come to a branch of a bank and try to shoot in there anymore. They can. It probably happens in Hollywood movies, but it's not very effective. Today, it's much more convenient to establish a server somewhere outside the United States uh, and to make an automatic AI-based program to run on that server that will hack into bank accounts and will steal half a dollar from a bank account. Nobody will complain, especially if you call it iTunes transaction or App Store transaction. And then you use it automatically. You do it 20 or 30 million times in a row. So in one month, 20 to $30 million goes to somebody else's bank account. And then you just disconnect the link, disappear, and bank will maybe discover it after one year. And just, this is just one example of the new breed of cybercrime. Another one uh, is allegedly North Korea uh, used to steal $81 million from a bank of Bangladesh using SWIFT network. Again, using what they call advanced persistent attack. Uh, or in other words, a machine that will use some sort of not very sophisticated AI that will try again and again and again and then until it will find a bridge, take into this bridge, and steal money. That point you just made, particularly about attacks against the SWIFT network, is perhaps it's not widely known, but the SWIFT network is an incredibly important communications channel within financial institutions. Can you explain a little bit about how that works and the vulnerabilities involved? Absolutely. And uh, it is one example of a uh, the fact that the financial network is vulnerable. And then later on, I can tell you how uh, we solve this problem. But think about the fact that there are many banks in the world that not necessarily know how to speak with each other. Sometimes they use different languages, different currencies. Uh, they don't know about accounts. So there is one, what they call correspondence in banking network uh, that connects all the banks. So basically when you transfer money from bank, one bank to another, especially international transfers, uh, the money doesn't go straight from your bank to somebody else's bank in Saudi Arabia or in Israel or in some other place. It goes through the network called SWIFT network, uh, which on one hand is a very convenient solution. It's like a moderator that allows everybody to connect with each other. But on the other hand, this solution was developed uh, before the internet existed. And today, when everything is connected, when everything is accessible uh, by uh, digital means, when everything is in the cyber world, this network and the fact that all the banks are connected became a huge vulnerability. Uh, how are attacks becoming more sophisticated? You mentioned a moment ago, uh, attacks can target consumers and maybe swipe some money from their bank account. Um, but, but what about the attacks targeting banks uh, on, or, or corporate banking on a larger scale? How are these becoming more sophisticated and harder to prevent? So first of all, Let's look at the banks and let's, let's look at the detection solutions that they currently have. They're all based on rules or on domain expertise. And banks developed a lot of solutions to identify suspicious transactions, just as an example. But it's all based on the experience that bankers have with fighting with normal type of crime. For example, when we talk about money laundering, which is a type of fraud that not only allows bad guys to steal money, but to use this money for things like human trafficking, financing, or financing terror. Um, so historically, it was clear there was a rule that if somebody comes with a suitcase full of cash of $1 million, somebody has to report about it. But even in that case, the world has changed totally. Let me give you one example uh, that we discovered with one of our customers, a very large international bank. Uh, the way in that case uh, money was laundered is they, is they took 250 accounts and they transfer money to those accounts and then put a computer running artificial intelligence powered uh, software that started to move money between the accounts. Sometimes they were calling it present to my 
dad or uh, my tuition for my son or buying a car. And it's like a huge washing machine that was washing the money inside the bank, all done automatically. And then a few quarters later, when they started to move money out of the bank, nobody could identify what was the uh, true source of uh, uh, those uh, transactions. And it's only possible because everything is connected. Those servers were not in the United States. They were actually were outside the United States, connecting to those accounts. Uh, so this is one example how existing solutions couldn't identify it. Another one that is uh, pretty common, unfortunately, one of the most uh, practical, quote unquote, ways to finance terror is uh, to uh, make hundreds of thousands of people to contribute only 100, 200, 300 euros that happened in Europe. Uh, all the existing systems missed it because it's a lot of microtransactions. But obviously, then there were millions of dollars that were used to finance a, a terrorist tax. And last but not least, which people don't really realize, and I think we can make in another an entire uh, um, uh, hour uh, discussing it, is ATM networks. You know, people think about ATM as some sort of a financial device. Actually, it's IoT, Internet of Things device. Uh, same as a connected camera or connected thermostat, with one difference. If hackers hack into the ATM, they can steal real money. When they hack into a thermostat, maybe they can change the temperature in your house, which is not very interesting for criminals. Uh, and what they found is a way to hack into the ATM, bypass the computer, and send signals straight to the motor that call, is called dispenser, and also shut down the camera. And then imagine that you sit somewhere outside the United States. Each time you press a button, a note comes out of the uh, ATM somewhere in Broadway. Sounds like science fiction. Over $1 billion allegedly have been stolen this way. So just another example how cybersecurity used to steal real money. And cyber criminals are moving as fast or faster than law enforcement can and companies can become wise to how these types of schemes work with machine learning and artificial intelligence. It only increases the speed and abilities of cyber attacks. So Mark, I wonder if you could leave us with some advice uh, and, and ideas about how financial institutions can defend against sophisticated machine learning based cyber attacks. So luckily for all of us, there are solutions and the same way as hackers can or bad guys can utilize artificial intelligence. And you're right, they move faster. They don't have issues with regulation. They don't have issues with financing and they don't have to follow any rules. But on the other hand, there are more good guys. And artificial intelligence is used to defend financial institutions as well. Uh, for example, our solution uh, is based on uh, what you call unsupervised or intuitive AI. It will basically look constantly at all the transactions that are happening in the bank. And like human beings, we'll try to understand what's normal and what's legal and what's not. And then with very high precision, we'll identify those transactions that are suspicious and notify bankers very fast. Now, this is something that we as human beings cannot do. But luckily for us, artificial intelligence allows us to build those digital uh, guards that will uh, allow us to guard ourselves against uh, those attacks. Uh, not all the banks understand the problem, but I have to say that each and every bank that was hit by some sort of uh, cyber attack, stealing real money, uh, definitely uh, understands that they need artificial intelligence. They deploy it. And uh, luckily, it's working very well. 